Welcome to Model Steam Engines for Beginners, Part 37. Good quality steam and water piping is important. This video shows different ways to do it. Think the job through early on before you start. Here's an example of this. I made the condenser to suit the application. The steam inlet and the steam outlet are one and the same. You can use them either way around in an installation. I'm using the one on the top to accept the exhaust from the engine and the one at the side to feed the exhaust to the chimney. So here I'm making a suitable length of pipe with the unions to connect the engine to the condenser. The pipe and unions for the exhaust outlet on this engine are 5 16 by 32 fittings and 3 16 pipe. As the Stuart 7A is not a particularly big engine, it's OK to use 3 16 pipe for the exhaust. If the engine was any bigger than this though, I would have to go to quarter pipe. Here I'm getting ready to solder on the pipe fittings and don't forget the golden rule, put the union nuts onto the pipe first. Here's the pipe all ready for the cone unions to be silver soldered in place. And by the miracle of video, it's such a quick job it's finished. As usual, I haven't cleaned up the piping and will do this all in one go at the end. And for the cleanup of the piping, I will be using my acid bath or pickle bath. Generally, I would tie the piping together with some thin silicone rubber tubing that I have and the whole lot would then go into the acid bath. After a while, all the oxidisation from the piping will be removed. What I have to do next is a bit scary as this boiler does not belong to me. I have to drill a hole in the chimney. So what I'm doing is measuring the height of the outlet of the condenser and measuring the height where I need to scribe a line to make a hole. If I get this wrong, it's not going to look good. I need to have a nice straight pipe at this junction, well, apart from the bend that goes to the condenser. Here's a useful but rather obvious tip. I'm using a needle file in the hole of the steam outlet in the condenser to act as a scriber to make a mark on the chimney and then I can drill the hole and I know it's level with the condenser. Very important, do not just use an ordinary drill to start drilling a hole in the chimney. I used a centre drill because the centre drill will not wobble about and you will get an accurate countersunk hole. After the centre drill went through, I opened up the hole with a quarter drill, then I drilled it the right size for the fitting. Now I don't need to thread this, this must not be threaded, so it's a 3 8 fitting and this is a 3 8 hole. The fitting fits perfectly, not tight, not slack, it just fits in the hole. So I'm cleaning up the outside edge of the hole with my little needle file. And when I put the fitting in place, it looks okay. There's no point in threading this because you need to have a pipe on the inside that goes up the chimney. So I'll make this pipe at the same time as I make the pipe that goes from the condenser to the chimney. In this clip, I'm drilling out the fitting to 3 16 of an inch, and I'm going to silver solder a pipe into it which will go up the chimney. After the silver soldering is completed, I put the pipe loosely in place on the condenser, then move it out of the way to put this little piece in. This is the pipe that goes up the chimney, and it just fits nicely and presses into the hole. Now the main pipe from the condenser can be fastened both to the chimney and the condenser. No other securing method is required for the fitting in the chimney with the short pipe that goes up the chimney, because once the condenser is screwed to the baseboard, and once the pipe is tightened onto the condenser and the fitting, that's really all that is required to hold the fitting with its pipe up the chimney securely in place. All I need now is the condenser drain tap, and here it is. The builder of this steam plant, the original builder, has put a slot in the baseboard, and I assume that the idea of this is it will act as a sump with a suitable receptacle underneath to carry away the condensate. All I need to do now is clean up all the copper piping using my acid bath. And here it is, with the piping installed. The length of silicone rubber tubing is tied to the piping, which makes it very easy to remove the piping without putting my hand into the mixture, which would not be a good thing to do. I may never play the piano again. Here's a video I did a while back about lagging copper piping using string. First of all, I put a spot of cyanoacrylate adhesive on the pipe. This holds the end. And then I just wrap the string all round the pipe, and periodically, I give the string a coating of cyano to hold it in place. And as it says on the video, this is not just for decoration. On this engine, there is a long steam pipe that goes from the wet header to the superheater, and another long steam pipe, which goes from the superheater directly to the engine. When the plant is in steam, both of these steam pipes will get very hot, especially the one that leaves the superheater. 
Some people use PTFE tape for lagging pipes and it's no good at all really. It soon gets very badly stained by the oil. Here's a photograph of an installation in a boat. The builder of the engine used PTFE and you can see the difference between that and the one I did on the end of the engine. And that's the reason why I always recommend using string. Once it's been painted, either using gloss paint or emulsion paint, it generally stays the same colour and doesn't go yellow. I'll be making another video very soon about piping details. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.